Alright folks, hello and welcome back to Downstage Gaming. I'm your host Josh, and this is part 49 of our Let's Play of The Letter. When we last left off with Luke, uh, we had finished our sort of day of taking care of Kylie, uh, Luke and Hannah's goddaughter, and we basically at the end of that discovered that Kylie has a quote-unquote imaginary friend named Takako, uh, who is just the girl, the ghoul, the maid that's been haunting us. Uh, and so now I think I will start referring to her as Takako until I, until I get something better. <laughs> until, until I get more information. Um, so after Kylie left, we sort of had this bizarre thing of going into the sort of... Uh, uh, not the parlor, the, the dance hall sort of area of the mansion. And we had this... Uh, like flashback to the specific memories that we've gotten based on Zach and Rebecca's deaths. Uh, and we sort of had a freak out there. We ran back up here. We ran into Johans and then Johans has now noted that Hannah, who he had just brought up to the bedroom here is gone. So Johans left to go search. There's sort of an all hands on deck thing. And we are at the night that we left off with Ash in his chapter, so we should probably be catching up to that climax again very soon, but here we go. With a nod, he leaves, locks, and closes the door behind him. For a moment, I still hear his voice while he gives the guards outside firm instructions, then a hush as soon as he departs and his footsteps fade away. One that doesn't quite last. As quickly as the silence settles, lightning flashes across the sky, followed immediately by the loud boom of thunder. And that wanker strikes so dangerously close that I can feel the electricity in the air. The power goes out not a second later, and I feel as if I'm being mocked by whatever greater power there is. All is deathly still for a moment, but soon the rain starts once again. I mean, honestly, Luke, if there is a god, <laughs> it would be good for that god to give you a little bit of punishment. Far heavier than the light drizzle from this morning, it's pitter-patter hitting hard against this place's roof. Despite the noise, I find myself drawn to my bed, exhausted, hoping for a little nap. I'm safe here. Hana will be safe here too. Shokin will find her, and when I awake, she'll be here. It does not take long. Once my head hits the pillow, in a matter of minutes, darkness claims me, bringing with it laughters and whispers of a twisted love from a time long gone. Uh, who are you? St stay away! Sweet dreams, my love. It'll be over soon. <laughs> okay, here we are. The dawn of the final day. Tw 24 hours of rain? Probably not. Probably less than that. <laughs> Yet, in spite of the unfamiliar voices and unwanted touches from shadows lurking in the dark, rousing is a slow, arduous process. Difficult, every limb heavy with lead, no matter my aversion for the words they murmur in my ears or the sight of her a horrid smile from afar, my body refuses to yield. I am at their mercy. Beyond fathomable reason, my consciousness refuses the pull of the waking world, choosing to linger in the pits of a dream gradually drawing me deeper into unknown depths. Somehow, even if it might mean I may never open my eyes, I allow them. You do not belong there, my prince. So I kind of said it before, and I'm even more kind of convinced now that in some way, this ghoul wants Luke as a sort of like, e either as like a vessel to bring back her previous uh, lord, with, or she just wants him to be that, like, person in place of him? We'll see. Not that I mind getting a few extra hours, of course. The bed's more than comfortable as it is. After an exhausting day yesterday, babysitting Kylie, the stress of finding an intruder in my own home, not to mention those bloody eyeballs they left, I think I deserve a little break every once in a while. Luke had a tough day, especially after going through all that in a single day. I can only be on the receiving end of so many unacceptable things within the span of a few hours, you know. You realize you put getting eyeballs in a gift in the same category as taking care of your godchild, right? As gracious a host and person I am, my patience has its limits, too. Although there's still that problem with Hannah, I haven't forgotten that, of course. But that's why I hire Shroken. 
He's competent enough. He won't even last a day in my service if he's any lesser than those half-wits who think they can deceive me with sweet words. He's more than capable of working on his own without guidance. Let the butler take care of that little problem with Hannah, while I... Hannah. Yeah, nothing creepy about this. I am here. We are here. This is where your home is. Come back to us. So that's the second time they referred to Luke's blood, which makes you wonder if there's some sort of weird, like, his great 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 grandfather was actually the Lord or something. How long has it been since? Johans has never taken this long before. Surely there should have been an update by now. <sighs> All right. So why isn't there? No. No. Please. Please don't go. Bloody hell, the Cretans I've surrounded myself with. And that isn't enough reason to force myself out of bed? As it has always been the case. No. My eyes fly open, expecting the warm rays of sunshine filtering through the curtains, only to be greeted by a blinding flash of light and a loud boom of thunder that sounded nearly too close to my ears. Strong gusts of wind will occasionally burst in from the open balcony door, bringing in drizzles of cold rain into the room. I must have left it open earlier before dozing off. The carpet in the floor closest to it is already drenched. Han is going to be cross once she sees this. Not that it's an immediate problem. If anything, it's this power outage we should be minding first. With the intruder still at large, steering through the darkness might be far more fatal than multiple stab wounds or a gunshot to the cre to the chest. Oh, great. The power's still out. That is exactly what I need right now. Yes. It's the storm, of course. I should have moved back to the penthouse to weather it in a much more mm, comfortable setting. Already, I can hear the creak and groans of this old place as rain beats against the windows. Johans! Has someone been sent to take the circuit breaker yet? Johans? Silence. Shroken! Someone! Wow. Anyone? Glad you finally said it, so I know it's Shroken now. Still nothing, and my cordial mood is quickly dissipating. Where are those idiots when you need them? That famous Luke Wright cordialness. It really is a wonder why he hasn't fixed this yet. Was I really out that long? Can't be. It has only been a few hours after midnight, if the time of my wristwatch is anything to go by. So we are probably, like, minutes away from catching up to the bit where Ash's chapter ends. Unless I've forgotten to change it again after that last overseas trip a month ago. Though the delay is understandable if he went looking for Hannah as he promised. But bloody hell, my safety's also at stake here. And honestly, like, Hannah's good and all, but come on! Cursing, I stay still, letting my eyes try and adjust to the darkness while my hands fumble for my slippers. If that butler isn't going to fix this, I may as well order the security posted outside to do it. It's probably just a blown fuse. Anyone with a brain can repair one. Grabbing my jacket with footwear finally on, I make for the door. Although in haste, I pause briefly when a gleam catches my eye. On one of my drawers, underneath the clutter I've yet to organize, the muzzle of a gun peeks out. Hannah has never openly commented on my possession of it, but I know she does not approve of it, knowing the bloody firearm, firearms policy in this nation. Of course, I've not found much use for it in the seven years we've been together, otherwise she would have already had it thrown out years ago. Doesn't mean it won't be useful right now. Without second thought, I seize it, sending the stuff piled above it onto the floor. Eh? Whatever. <laughs> I'll get to it later. Is, it, is this going to be like something super important fell on the floor or something? This blackout problem should be resolved first. Right next to my missing security detail, as it turns Where out. Where the fuck did everyone go? <laughs> Are you all throwing a surprise party for me? You all know it's not my birthday. There were two, weren't there? Shroken had two blokes posted to stand guard for the night. I might be panicking for a bit earlier, but I'm quite sure I haven't gotten delusional yet. What, did both of them decide to take a break? Because they think the master's already sound asleep and won't be looking for them? Damn nitwits. I know assassinations happen very rarely these days, and even less in a peaceful city like Luxborn, but bollocks! There's been a woman going in and out of this place, uninvited, who may or may not want to put a knife in my back. I don't 
don't think she wants to kill you. I really don't get that impression. And another peasant managed to break into this house just the other day. Isn't that enough reason to stay on alert? I'm fairly certain Shroken won't just enlist their help just for the power outage, only to leave me unprotected. We have a difficult friendship, so to speak, but I doubt that man is an opportunist. I'm holding the lives of his family in my hands, after all. Oh. Interesting. Really? He knows what I'm capable of doing. He's not stupid enough to do anything that'll endanger them and save only himself. So where, then? Only my footsteps echo along dark passage, and I am left gripping the hand on my pistol for some sort of comfort. That's interesting to find that get some information on why the heck Johannes actually works for Luke. Without proper lighting, and with the storm still raging outside, the stories I've heard about this place seem to have some truth to it. Some. If I'm reaching and wish to entertain myself for a bit, I'll say there may also be ghosts whispering my ears, calling. Oh, how ridiculous. Of course, it's just the wind and the trees rustling outside. Nothing good will come of allowing these thoughts to linger when problems are piling up in front of me, one after another. Especially with that what greets me once I get to the foyer. Though it's dark, the large windows illuminate the area much more easily than any of the other rooms. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, so after long distance, we're switched way out the house. Calm for some reason, exercise site. Okay, so this is basically taking place at the same time. Okay, yep, yep, yep. That makes sense. And from where I stand at the top of the stairs, I can easily make out their forms. Recognize them, even. It's all gone crazy when these intruders come into my house. I'm no stranger to a cop playing dirty. The smart ones knew that neither life nor criminals are going to play fair. But Lily? The estate agent? She doesn't seem the sort. Not to mention Mint. Hana trusted her. I trusted her. To be a professional, at the very least, for fuck's sake. I mean, if she's not gonna have sex with me, fine, but at least don't break into my house. Well, well, what have we here? <laughs> if I were any less sober, I'd say this is the beginning of a joke. Bloody trespassers. What is wrong with these people? Do they really think I'll be fine with them walking to my home like this? What are they even doing in here? If I didn't know any better, they might also be behind Hana's disappearance. That's right, my love. They must have a motive. Oh, that's not good. And it better be a good one. Oh, what have they done? Or a bullet to the head is the least all of them will deserve. I don't make a habit of harming women, of course, but this is just crossing the line. Let's see. A real estate agent and an interior designer walk into a mansion. Thunder crackles once again, cutting me off. This time, its sound hits close enough that it nearly feels as if the windows of the ground itself are rumbling. All is deathly still for a moment. I don't let it stop me, however, as I slowly make my way towards them, taking one careful step at a time, relishing the expression of fear in their eyes. I suppose there's something ominous in this setting, with the heavy rain outside and the lack of light here. Kind of like it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm a lot of things, and a drama queen is at the top. Love the drama. Add something to the atmosphere. I suppose I must look like the villain now. No, no, no! But short of me getting close to them, a noise to my left distracts me, briefly holding my movements while curiosity takes over every murmurs in my head. And it's a good thing, perhaps, that I did, because as soon as I look up, I see him. The detective from a few days ago, the one Lee mentioned. Just as he's about to jump down from the furniture that has somehow ended up piled and blocking the door to the parlor. What happened there? Did he really think it's alright to do that in other people's house? Lout. Teach him, my lord. Put him in his place. My hands already moving before any rationale can stop me. Fingers firm at my gun when I finally release the safety from it and take aim. Not at him, but at his friends. They are his, aren't they? Why else would they be here together? Doesn't matter. I know his kind follows some form of moral standard. He won't let an innocent be harmed, especially people he cares about. My finger on the trigger is more than itching to shoot, but I hold back. Sure, I could have simply taken aim at him, 
But more than seeing him bleed, I want to see the expression on his face once he realizes everything he's doing is futile. He's trapped. Lives are in my hands. His life's in my hand. Had I known there would be a party in my own home tonight, I would have opened a bloody bottle or two. People these days, in my own home. Can you believe it? I feel so left out. I can tell the exact moment the realization dawns on him. A short second of his body freezing and blood draining from his face as soon as his feet hits the floor and he looks up. He's already a prey. Trapped by his own recklessness. Oh, pathetic. And really, Lily, even you. Sir, this isn't what you're thinking. Something's... something's going on in this mansion. No, the voices in my head tell me that you're lying. Well, obviously, why else would people be trespassing in my home? What's your excuse? Checking back if your clients are doing okay? Is that it? Is this what this is? Oh, we're doing good, by the way. Except that one of us is missing and the other one's going totally insane! Sir, please! Oh, please what? We need to get out of this place. You need to leave. ta 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 not a good enough excuse, darling. You people are the ones who need to get out of my sight. Don't worry. I might consider pressing lighter charges for the woman. Oh, thank God. Can't say the same for feathers here, though. But really now? I swear, people need to stop breaking into my house! This is how you want to start the week. Why don't we just go with a bloody massacre if we want to surprise people in their homes, huh? It's just a passing remark, of course. Not stupid enough to do something that'll bring negative attention to myself. Reputation and all that, I can't just risk it. The thought of having dead bodies here, ones that I'm not even responsible for, they're the ones who trespassed. It's... It's already quite too much. It'll literally be overkill, especially for someone like me. Nevertheless, joke or not, Feathers wastes no time drawing his own gun at the slight wave of my own, even if he knows it's already too late. Still, he glares at me. Still, he fights back. Now, now, Feathers. Manners. You're in no position to be pointing that gun at people. There's no desperation in him like I'm hoping, just an annoyance flickering shortly before being hidden underneath a challenge. The likes of him are the kind of people I hate the most, even with their failures already glaring down at them, mocking every worthless move they make, they have the impudence to stare people in the eye. Why don't you put yours down first, and then we'll talk about manners. Oh, he talked back the gall. You know, your kind pisses me off so much. Annoying, most of the time, like a damn pest you can't be rid of. But to some degree, it is... commendable. I'll give him that. After all, we're almost the same in that regard. Almost. I'm still the better person, of course. Of course. He tells me to put the gun down, but I see no reason why I should. I'm a home. <laughs> I own land! In defense of my own home. I have the right to, I'd like to think. Questionable permit of firearms aside, it's not like I wanted this, but I'm already high strung and their presence does not help bloody peasants. I can never seem to figure out how their minds fully work. Take this one, for example. Despite the pride brimming in him, how he matches my glare with one of his own, he simply lowers his pistol after a long second. Not in surrender. That tense set in his shoulders tells me as much, but the closest as he can get to lowering his own ego in favor of something I can't quite place. Interesting. Gotta admit, I'm almost disappointed. As you should be, my lord. I've expected him to hold until one of us shoots the other. Can't say it'll be more exciting that way. A bullet inside any part of my body isn't something I'd like to have on a bad day like today, or any day for that matter. But it'll surely be predictable of him. And I like predictable. They're the kinds of people who are the easiest to deal with, no matter the situation. With them, there's no second guessing what they'll do. He shoots, I shoot, one of us dies, the other walks away. Nothing complicated. Nothing requiring much brain power, just muscle memory, and who's the better shooter? End of story. Yet here he is, dragging a deep breath in and setting aside the only thing protecting him. I can easily shoot him this way and be done with this whole farce of a conversation. Instead, I find myself listening. A concession, 
for a person who, in another life, would have also become the person I am today had his circumstances allowed it. Damn shame. We might have gotten along. Listen, right. I need you to... But alas... You broke into my house, and somehow, somehow, you expect me to listen like a good little boy. Well, you expect me to wag my tail for you? Are you a bit touched in the head, Feathers? I'm not the one breaking laws here. Look here, fucker. If I wanted you dead, I could have done it so many times already. In fact, I can easily shoot you down right here, right now. And you won't be able to do a damn thing, even with that gun. A meeting of two prideful blokes will never go well, whichever lifetime it is. <laughs> and I can only laugh at his audacity, his lack of shame and fear, even facing the business end of my pistol. You know what I'm thinking right now? In another lifetime, we would have probably gotten along well. The best truth I can offer him, not many people, those who have slighted me in particular, live this long to see it. Yes, especially when he has a lot to answer. Preferably right now, because as generous as I've been so far, my patience has its limits. My amusement can only last for so long. In two steps, I'm standing in front of him, grabbing him by the collar and resting the cold muzzle of the eagle against his temple. Ashton! He'll end up a pretty smear on the wall this close. What is it that you people really want with me? This is the third time this week, and I'm really getting weary of this little game. So now this the third time this week makes a lot more sense. Because we didn't have the context of the maid also quote unquote breaking in. Did the NZA send you to apprehend me? Or has somebody paid you off to kill me? Which one is it, feathers? Mind you, my arm's getting tired. Better answer quick if you don't want to beat the business end of this gun. And he knows it. Of course he does. He's a trained officer, isn't he? But not many bother to be as cautious as him. One glimpse of my handgun's safety earlier is all it took for him to see I mean business. Similar. Too similar. We're too alike in so many little ways, it's funny. I, like, I get where they're trying to go with this, but I really don't think these two are as similar as they're trying to make it out to be. Like, in the same way that, yes, if, if your life was drastically different, and you grew up in drastically different circumstances. Yes, you might have been quite alike, but that's a big part of what makes you you, you know? Down to the fact that he doesn't even flinch, no matter how heavy the threats in my words are. Even knowing how one flick of my finger on the trigger will be enough to end his sorry life, he should have caved in by now, started begging, like so many others before him. Instead, he throws more vitriol, adds more kindling to a fire already burning. And to think he chose the lower my ego, try to beg, it really doesn't seem like an ash. I'm not with NCA. I'm just here to help. There's something else in this house, and we're all in danger. You have to believe me, right? You need to let us go. You need to get out of here before it's too late. If you want to keep your sorry ass alive, you'll listen to people with more brain cells than you. Igniting it further that I can't help but return it to him with equal fervor. Okay, thought that one would have been read aloud. We don't need him, my love. Why, you insolent. We both decide to move in that moment, both our bodies tensing, each of us racing to get ahead of the other. However, before we can get a head start, a voice unexpectedly rings above the chaos about to ensue. Mac, help me. Well, this, this makes even less sense now, because it seemed like the uh, Takako here, if that's the same voice that's in Luke's head now, which it seems like it is, it seemed like she wanted them to shoot each other, or at least certainly wanted Luke to shoot Ashton. So I don't know why she's interrupting this with this little performance. <laughs> I've always been cautious and careful, cutting off Trouble's head before things can escalate if I'm able. That's why I deal with the likes of Harvey, Suarez, and Johans. For all who we are, for all the enemies the likes of us can make, such a thing has never happened before, because I do everything to make sure it doesn't happen. So to see Hana in danger, I don't quite know how to feel or what to do. Of all the times so for there to be a hostage situation, if this even if this is if this is even one, why now? Good fucking god, what is going on here? Help me. Please. Please make it stop. 
I think death would be preferable if my sense of self-preservation was shot to high hell. It would deprive me of a choice and a responsibility in the matter. I don't want to think about how fast my heart beats so that I hardly hear anything other than my own heartbeat and her pleading. Please, they're in my head. Screaming. It hurts so much. What do I do? What can one do against someone holding your life in their hands? With a woman that looks more monster than man. When her expression turns into one of amusement and her horrific laughter fills the air, I'm torn apart. This is my fault, isn't it? Hannah is in danger because of me. Everybody I love always ends up hurt or worse. And even when I chose to let her go, she is no exception. I, she chose to let go of you, dude. Come on. Hannah's unbroken begging makes it all the much more painful. Because I still love Hannah. I really do. But will I really endanger myself for a woman who might not love me back anymore? Still, something in me dies a little when that woman laughs as if this is all some sick joke. Her smile taunts me, filling my head with laughter and rage until I can barely think over the cacophony in my head. And the way the woman looks at me, as if she's watching, waiting for my next move. Please! Someone! Anyone! Help me! This is crazy. And I don't know what I should do. I know for a fact that one shouldn't aggravate a hostage taker. There's no winning an argument with someone who holds a life easily taken. But I need to do something, right? My decision is taken from me, however. Mint is all impetus and no thought, no holding back as she steps up. Her eyes blaze a fire in anger and defiance. Her jaw and her stance is set, this curled at her sides, as if she can just sock the sock the width in the face. Suck the witch, maybe, in the face, and have it bear no consequence? I don't know. She looks like a warrior saint, and I'd name one of my- I'd name one of them if I know any. She thankfully does not rush headlong like an idiot, but she falters, the fire in her eyes down to nothing but a small spark, when a woman laughs in her face. There's fear on her face, and that does nothing to settle my worries, and she has the gall to turn her ire on me instead. What are you doing just standing there when she has Hannah? Oh, what the bloody hell do you expect me to do? <laughs> you got a gun, Luke. Get your fucking arse in gear and do anything? <laughs> yes, that's very helpful, my fella. <laughs> Telling me to get my arse in gear isn't gonna help solve shit here. <laughs> Time to get it moving, Luke. This isn't some bloody action film where me charging in is going to save anyone. You never know. One stupid move from any of us, and Hana might be dead because of it. I know she looks like a scary fucker and all, but she's your wife, you gobshite. There must be something. The woman doesn't look on, but that does not mean she is not dangerous. If anything, the fact that she's this confident, this unperturbed, while being barehanded is testament to itself. Either she's well prepared, or she's just that crazy. I think it might be a combination. And it's one thing to work with hostage takers, and another thing entirely to work with a criminally insane. A hush settles over the room as she speaks up. Her voice is but a whisper, and deathly slow, and I'm hard pressed to hear it over the pounding of my heart in my ears. She speaks, the woman from the gardens and the servant girl from the ballroom, from the hallucination, vision, memories, whatever they were. Will you not speak up for her? Will you not try to save your beloved wife? I cannot stop the heat from flooding my cheeks, shame turning me red and making me grit my teeth in anger. And that same anger sets a fire in me, burns through the fear. It spurs me on to call her out because of pride. Why? Will my words hold any sway? Who's to say you won't snap her neck the moment I take one step? Do you take me for an idiot? Well, I mean, you do nothing, and then and then what? Like, it's gonna happen either way, then. I take you for a coward. And you're correct. Nothing but a spineless coward. It seems she's found what she's looking for, that she has no further use for Hana. Let's take a look at what we got. Ooh. I like it. All right. A hand on Hannah's back sends her falling down the stairs. She's nothing but a rag doll, thrown away because she's lost interest with her like a child with an old toy. I'm frozen in place, but Mint, she catches her, and that sends the two of them sprawling at the foot of the stairs. Clearly, it was a painful landing, further aggravated by the fact the Irish woman is still... The Irish woman is still seems weak. 
Yet I just watch as she puts Hannah's well-being first. She pulls the both of them up to their feet and dusts their clothes off. That's what love looks like, Luke. There's a small, strained smile on her face and a tint of red, one that I can't entirely attribute to adrenaline on her face all the while. You, you all right there, Hannah? Were you hurt? The shine in her eyes almost makes me feel jealous, though I don't know who wouldn't be. Mint is a handsome lady. And with the way she looks at Hannah, well, anyone would be lucky if Hannah ever so much as looks their way. Uh, oh no, I'm fine, Marianne. Are you all right? I wasn't too heavy, was I? <laughs> uh, I, I had some chocolate a couple days ago and I'm worried. If Hannah doesn't wish to be with me anymore, perhaps she will easily find happiness with another. And McCulloch seems like she has the stuff to make her a good, significant other. Well, a little bit. Not that I'm saying you're fat or, or anything. <laughs> Hannah laughs, out of breath, and she smiles at me, though that disappears as quick as, as, as it has appeared. We aren't quite out of the woods yet, and she hasn't forgotten what I did, or rather, what I failed to do. It is only fair, I suppose. I'm nothing but a coward in her eyes. A sorry excuse for a man who can't even muster up the courage to protect her. And we nearly forget for a moment. You do not deserve what you have. You're right. Just hearing her voice triggers something in Hannah, and she starts to tear up. Her face contorts under one of pain and fear. Mint is quick to place her hands on Hannah's face so that she looks at her and her alone. This is right. Look at me and take deep breaths. She doesn't have you anymore, all right? I don't know exactly what in bloody hell is going on, but I can't find it in me to care. Whoever these people are and whatever they're here for, this is not acceptable. For all I know, this is all some dumb charade to get to me. All the times I've seen the woman before, it could have all been an act to get to me, to get under my skin. And to think they dare hurt Hannah? For all the fear that I had felt, seeing her touch Hannah, I can only think of her as an actress in grotesque makeup. My hands still shake, the fear of not having quite gone, but anger fills me as I look at a woman. As I look at the woman, a sneer on my face. How? How dare you? I don't care who you are, but how dare you touch Hana? I want you out of my house. Out oh, before I call the police and have you put away for the rest of your miserable life. And that goes for all of you. I hold my ground firm and strong with my declaration. <laughs> but the nerve of her, she just laughs in my face. A terrible, dreadful laugh that makes me feel as if there are ants crawling on my skin and maggots squirming into my ears. You are telling me to get out of your house. You threatened to lock me up. <laughs> she laughs and she laughs. What's so funny? What are you laughing at? None of this is funny! It's not like my funny joke I told before about the real estate agent and the, and the, and the other person coming. It was a really funny joke, all right? But she persists, and it almost feels like her voice is in my head. Oh, no different. No different. You're all the same. We're actually quite different characters. We're really good. There's a lot of differences between us. You can all suffer together. And that is when everything turns to complete and utter shite. It's a slow thing. A whisper more than a bang as the darkness creeps into every corner of the room. The walls shudder and groan. Blood runs from the ceiling, crawls down the walls, and stains the floor. It feels as if life itself is being sucked from the house slowly but surely. The beauty of the place is gone, with only the dead, decaying remains of a mansion left in its wake. I don't have to wonder if it is just the foyer that's become this nightmarish place. I can already hear it. Gone are the growling of thunder and the lashings of rain and wind against the foyer's high windows. All of it is replaced by a more grating sound. A cacophony of voiceness from nowhere and everywhere, echoing throughout the now horrid walls. Voice that neither belongs to us nor the people who live here. What? What's going on? <laughs> All throughout the house, shouts of alarm and surprise ring out. A mirror to the horror creeping up in each of us. Who wouldn't be shocked? This is insane. At the sight of it, Lily trembles, hugging herself closer, while Feather stands protectively in front of her. Brave of him, I have to admit, to put myself in the front of line like that. To put himself in the front line like that, excuse me. Though it doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't feel the same fear as the rest of us. Something I don't blame him for. There seems to be no end in sight of this insanity. If anything, this only feels like it's the beginning of the end. Help me. 
God, please, somebody, anybody. Uh, who are you? Stay, stay away. No, no, no. Stay away. Stay, stay away. Uh, I'm not afraid of you, you spook. This, this is one Scotswoman. You aren't getting into an early grave without a fight. No, she's here. You've got to let me out. She's going to kill me. Someone, she's... Their screams fill the mansion. So obviously we probably recognize those last two there, so presumably the ones that came before this are all of the victims of this curse? Of this Takako? I don't, I don't know. She laughs all the while, a harsh, agonizing sound that goes on for what feels like forever. Until there is nothing but silence, her horrid smile, and pale hands reaching out to me, calling, beckoning, Pleading. I'm terrified, I really am. Like, I should be, but I've never been one to truly stay afraid. I've long learned that fear will not get me anywhere. Cowering in a corner doesn't keep me safe, and it will not keep me alive. Not like rage does. I've learned to use this burning hate inside of me to survive. There is no difference now. Uh, stay away from me! Why? Why do you wish to leave? This is where you belong, my lord. Remember the blood we share? This is your home. Don't you remember? You promised to return. To stay together with me. With us. With people no different from you. W what is she talking about, Luke? What does she mean? Don't listen to her, she lies. I promised no such thing to anyone. <laughs> I mean, I've had a lot of infidelity issues, but this is not one of them. Hana, you're the one who bought this house. How should I know what she's bobbling about? I never even wanted to be here in the first place. A terrible case of mistaken identity. That must be it, I'm quite sure of it. I don't know this woman, this monster. Why would I say, what would I say to someone like her? In my entire lifetime, I've only made and kept sincere promises to a mere two people. Hannah Evans and Eleanor Shadler. No one else. The rest of those who claim I promised anything to them can go fuck themselves. Bloody hell, I may enjoy the company of women, but I'm not an idiot to start spouting such nonsense to anyone. A line must be drawn, especially if I'm to keep myself alive. Yet she still goes on, insists, making me appear a liar in front of these people. Of course you still deny it. Have you truly forgotten? You haven't changed, I see. Still a deceiver. True, definitely a deceiver. She's lying! You see, my love, nothing has changed. Still no difference, you and I. Just like the rest of us, just like every single soul in this putrid wreck. You've waited for so long. You can hear them, yes? The screaming people? Yeah. Their pleas, their calls. She, the monster, reaches out again, her hands a gory, abhorrent sight, along with that smile spread across her face. My body's already moving on instinct. Stumbling back, one step at a time, in a desperate bid to be away from her, anything to put distance between me and this vile creature. No matter what she says, I am nothing like her. I need to get out of this house. Out of this country, preferably. There's nothing for me here, not anymore. Nothing to keep tied to this place. With Hannah planning to leave me, Shroke and likely taken by this woman, nothing's left to bind me to this wretched city. I can leave, I can- Careful, Luke! My foot steps on something, sending me sliding on my back and flat on the floor. Beside me, a paper, familiar one, flutters down. It's this thing again from the open house, though it feels less like a gimmick and more like a threat with, with recent events. They must have fallen from one of these peasants in the comma and the commotion earlier. For a moment, they appear conflicted to see it in my hands, but wisely keep their opinion to themselves, leaving the damn thing to simply bear its grisly message for everyone in the room to see. Help me. Help me. Help me. Is this it? What they've been telling us? With everything in my life has gone to shit? Because of some stupid old letter? An invitation, indeed. One I am not willing to accept. Not any time. On the top of the stairs, the creature moves again, drawing my attention back to her. Her gait remains slow and awkward as she walks forward, that smile never leaving her. But I don't. I won't give her the chance. I am not dying here. I am certainly not giving myself to a hideous creature like her, either. Adrenaline kicks in, despite panic gasps and worried glances from the people in the room. I pay them no mind as I reach for the main door, and... Without warning, it slams open, revealing not the mansion grounds like I am expecting. 
before my mind can even comprehend what's happening, black tendrils have already coiled tightly around my lips, dragging every person in the foyer into the room. None of us even get to scream when darkness completely envelops us upon the door's closing. Understand where your place is now, my love. You belong here. Is it so difficult to grasp? We've been waiting. <laughs> Whew. All right. Well, I mean, you heard the game say it itself. We are, uh, we're at the beginning of the end here. And, uh, <laughs> God only knows what awaits us from here. We'll have to find out. Until then, this has been Downstage Gaming. I have been your host, Josh, and I will catch you all next time.